Hello students, I welcome you all to the online video lecture on course Turbo Machines. Uh, this is the fourth lecture on module number one, that is introduction to the Turbo Machines. In the previous video lectures, we have seen the definition of Turbo Machines, the classification of Turbo Machines, the differences between positive displacement machine and Turbo Machines, and also we have seen how to find the dimensionless numbers that is pi1, pi2, pi3, pi4 terms by using Buckingham pi theorem by considering a general fluid flow problem. Okay. So if you are not followed those video lectures, kindly follow the playlist, which is there in the playlist box. And if you are not subscribed my channel yet, kindly like, share and subscribe my channel. Okay. So let's start our video lecture. The significance of pi terms or the dimensionless numbers. Okay. In the previous class, we have seen the pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, pi 4 terms by using the Buckingham pi theorem. They are the dimensionless numbers. In this video lecture, we will see what is the significance of those pi terms, those pi terms or the dimensionless numbers to the turbo machines. Okay. The first one is capacity coefficient or flow coefficient or specific capacity and the speed ratio. Now we know that uh, the pi one term is also known as the capacity coefficient or flow coefficient, which is given by pi one equals to Q by NDQ, where Q is the flow rate, N is the speed in RPM and D is the diameter of rotor or runner. It is a capacity coefficient or flow coefficient or specific capacity which signifies the volume flow rate of the fluid through the turbo machines of unit diameter of runner operating at unit speed. Okay, so this pi one term signifies the volume flow rate of fluid through a particular turbo machine, which is having the unit diameter and running at unit speed is called the capacity coefficient. Okay, so here uh, for the pump or fan, certain diameter running at various speed, the discharge is proportional to the speed. Say for example, if we consider a fan or a pump, which is having a certain diameter, then the Q, the flow rate is directly proportional to N. The flow rate is directly proportional to N. Say for example, uh, this is uh, the constant term. The pi one is a constant term. So diameter is also constant. Once you manufactured, uh, a turbine, then its diameter is fixed. Okay. Now the only variables are uh, Q and N. So if we take uh, these constant to the left hand side, okay, just do the cross multiplication and replace the constant and the equal to sign by a proportionality sign. I can write, I can write Q is directly proportional to Q is directly proportional to N. That is, flow rate is directly proportional to speed of the runner. So this itself is nothing but the first fan law. This itself is nothing but the first fan law. Okay, I hope this is clear. Okay, now let's move ahead. So the specific speed is related to other quantities. Specific speed is related to other quantities called speed ratio. It's called speed ratio and obtained as follows and obtained as follows okay now we know that pi1 equals to q divided by ndq which is also proportional to d square v by ndq okay now here we know that the q q can also be written as a into v it is a product of a and v where a is the cross section area and v is a velocity now if we consider a circular pipe of certain diameter and if we consider the fluid is flowing through, let me consider the incompressible fluid, which is flowing through this pipe with the velocity V, with the velocity V. And if D is a diameter of the pipe, if D is a diameter of the pipe, then cross-sectional area is pi by 4 D square. The cross-section area A equals to pi by 4 D square. This is pi by 4 D square. Okay, fine. Now here, now Q is also proportional to pi by 4 is a constant, 
v is also yes phi uh, over 4 is constant now replacing the equal to sign and the constant by a proportionality sign then i can write q is directly proportional to q is directly proportional to the d square and velocity v that is a mean velocity of fluid flowing through the pipe mean velocity of the fluid flowing through the pipe so that's why i have written in place of q i have written d square into v and this uh, n d q as it is okay now here 1 d uh, d square and d square will get cancel 1 d is remaining so v by n d okay now here the nd can also be written as u nd can also be written as u so how look here so u we know that the tangential velocity u is given by pi d n by 60 pi d n pi d n by 60 pi d n by 60 okay now pi by 60 is a constant pi by 60 is constant okay so if we replace the equal to and the constant term by a proportionality sign then i can write u is directly proportional to nd u is directly proportional to nd so that's why i have written that's why i have written in place of nd the u okay now here v by u can also be written as 1 by phi u by v or v by u can be written as 1 by phi where phi is nothing but the speed ratio the phi is nothing but the speed ratio now look here carefully now phi is nothing but speed ratio which is defined as the ratio of which is defined as the ratio of tangential velocity of the runner or rotor divided by the velocity of jet or theoretical velocity of fluid or jet u stands for tangential velocity of the runner tangential velocity of the runner that is u and v stands for theoretical jet velocity theoretical jet velocity okay so this remains fixed the speed ratio remains fixed for the machine for a particular machine the value of phi remains fixed okay so sometimes in numerical he will mention the speed ratio then the uh, you are supposed to take uh, phi as a symbolic representation for speed ratio okay fine for a given machine the speed ratio remains fixed fine now the next pi term is pi 2 we know that pi 2 equals to gh divided by n square d square this we have obtained in the previous lecture that is uh, lecture number 3 okay so pi 2 equals to gh divided by n square d square this is also known as the head coefficient or specific head now here pi 2 can also be written as gh by n square d square and just now we have seen nd can be replaced by u nd can be replaced by u okay so gh divided by u square as it is fine now in terms of uh, head in dimensionless form the pi 2 can also be written as pi 2 can be written as see if we take the g to the denominator then i can write h divided by u square divided by g u square divided by g and this is the psi this is called psi so how to pronounce it okay what is the spelling p s i this is psi okay this is psi this is how we have to pronounce it fine now this is called flow ratio this is called the flow ratio psi is called flow ratio it represents the ratio of kinetic energy of the fluid under the head h to the kinetic energy of the fluid running at a tangential speed of the runner okay we know that this is uh, the shaft and over which we have the runner okay the drum and over the periphery of this circular drum we have the number of curved structures or curved blades which are known as the blades frequently which are known as the blades okay they are known as blades okay fine these are the blades now this is the nozzle this is the nozzle now at the nozzle the potential energy of the fluid is converted into high velocity jet now the numerator term represents the numerator term that is h represents the head head which gives rise to the kinetic energy of the fluid 
okay so we know that at uh, the nozzle the potential energy the potential energy of fluid is converted into kinetic energy potential energy of the fluid is converted into kinetic energy so potential energy is p is given by pe the potential energy pe is given by mgh it is given by m g and h okay mgh now m is a mass g is a acceleration due to gravity and h is head now this head represents this head represents okay the fluid under the head of h to the kinetic energy of the fluid running at a tangential speed now when this uh, fluid hits the runner blade runner blade there is a change in momentum and the pressure due to the change in direction of the fluid which gives rise to uh, the transfer of energy from fluid to the runner and hence the runner will rotate meanwhile along with the runner the fluid will also rotates the fluid will also rotates along with the runner as the runner rotates at a very high speed around 20000 rpm this is the speed of runner okay so naturally the fluid will also runs at this speed now the denominator term represents that is u square by g the kinetic energy of the fluid the kinetic energy of the fluid which is running at a runner speed uh, which is running along with the runner which is running along with the runner that is fluid running at tangential speed of the rotor so this is h divided by u square by g okay this is the pi to term now for a given machine uh, with uh, some diameter the head varies directly with the square of the tangential speed of the rotor or the impeller this is called the second fan law listen here carefully now if uh, we simplify this that is pi 2 pi 2 can also written as pi 2 can also written as okay so if we cross multiply this okay so we will get a pi 2 by g here pi 2 by g here and uh, okay and here e u square as it is and u square as it is which is equals to h which is equals to h so just uh, uh, i have done the cross multiplication this equation and i have written in this form that is pi 2 by g u square as it is equals to h now here for a particular turbo machine which is having certain diameter which is having certain diameter the h the head is directly proportional to the head h is directly proportional to square of the tangential velocity of the runner so u stands for the tangential velocity of the runner or the impeller so what the second fan law states the head h for a given turbo machine which is having certain diameter the h is directly proportional to or it is directly varies with the square of tangential velocity of the runner or the impeller okay so this is the second fan law this is the second fan law so sometimes in examination he may ask state and explain first fan law second fan law and third fan law okay just you need to remember the pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 terms and you can explain it accordingly okay fine now let's go to the third important term that is a power coefficient or specific power power coefficient or the specific power now pi 3 term the term pi 3 is p divided by rho n cube d to the power 5 the pi 3 is p rho n cube p by rho n cube d to the power 5 where p is a power and uh, rho is density of the fluid n is a speed in rpm and d is a diameter in meters so this ratio this coefficient the pi 3 is also known as the power coefficient or specific power power coefficient or specific power it represents basically it represents the relationship between power fluid density speed and wheel diameter now for a given turbo machine for a given turbo machine the power p varies directly with the cube of speed of the runner speed of the runner now if we simplify this equation say pi 3 is constant rho is also constant now if we use if we use the incompressible fluids in turbo machine say water in hydraulic turbines water is uh, used as a working fluid and we know that water is incompressible what do you mean by incompressible fluid the fluid which is having the constant value of density the constant value of density the density remains constant rho remains constant okay rho remains constant 
such fluids are known as the incompressible fluids now if we consider the incompressible fluid uh, flow through the turbo machine rho is constant and d is also constant so if we replace the equal to sign and these constant terms then i can write p is directly proportional to p is directly proportional to cube of the runner speed cube of the runner speed okay so this is the third fan law this is the third fan law i hope this is clear okay so in this video lecture we have seen uh, what are the significances of these pi terms that is pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 and how to define or how to state first fan law second fan law and third fan law and we have also seen the important term that is a speed ratio is pi okay so please uh, Uh, watch this video till end and if you are not subscribe my channel yet so please subscribe the channel like and share among your friends okay and don't uh, forget to press the bell icon so that uh, whenever i put a new video on youtube you will get the notification instantly okay so thank you and have a nice day